Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome back. So, welcome to my. I guess this is a this is still a guide video. Um, I want to help out some people, and I've been getting some questions. Not just recently, but I've been getting these questions for a long time. So I wanted to make a video that I can um, kind of send people to if if I ever get questions like these in the future. And this is a a topic that I guess is somewhat controversial within the Moss Super League community, and that is that is the topic of square slots. Um, now you might have seen me in previous videos where I'm summoning, like freak out when my monsters don't have square, um, especially especially dark monsters like when I have square or if if I don't have square. I'm going to be talking about all these gem slots, um, and then I'm going to be talking specifically about square slots in detail and why square slots are the best slots in Monster Super League. Now I'm going to go over some very general knowledge, um, just so like if you're completely new, you can still follow along. Now, when you have a monster in Monster Super League, when you summon a monster, or when you catch one, or you get them from, um, or they're born in any way possible, they come with random slots. So some monsters come come with like double square one diamond. Some come with like two square one triangle. Some of them come with, uh, you know, like one of each. Uh, some of them come with like no square. Some of them come with you know triple diamond. Uh, these are all just completely random. You'll you're you can't really do anything about it um, when a monster is summoned there they like they have random slots so most of the time it doesn't really matter that much because um, you are still able to gem them up relatively effectively depend even if they have like you know the least optimal slots um, so but before we talk about square slots I'll talk about the diamond and the triangle slots now the diamond slot is unique because um, the diamond slots are the only slots in the game that have crit damage. So these are th this main stat um, over here. Like you can still have crit damage in the substats, but having crit damage as a main stat is exclusive only to. Um, this is not a diamond. This is a triangle. All right, I'm I'm like I, I fail math, but I also fail geometry. So I guess geometry is part of math. So I'm. I'm pretty bad at that, at, at, at anything that involves math in general. Um, so anyways, this is the triangle slot. I just, uh, for some weird reason, I kept calling it diamond. Um, but you can tell us it's, it's a triangle, unless you're, unless you're uh, geometrically retarded like I am. Or mathematically retarded like I am. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're only able to get the crit damage main stat on triangle slots. Now, you can get these other main stats, like attack, HP, and defense, um, both flat and percentage ones. You can get them on all three of the gem shapes. So you can only get crit damage on these ones. Um, it's not too important. Crit damage overall does not really matter that much. It, I think the only benefit when you're running crit damage is if you're, say for example, you're putting together like a 100% crit um, Valor set, I think, maybe, um, on like, a monster with predator or something like that then, then I think crit damage is better than better than attack so usually I only keep crit damage gems that have very high crit rate or at least like two rolls into it and the, this like this one is like two max rolls and it's a ruin gem so I decided to keep this one um, I usually don't keep crit damage gems unless they have very very good substats because it's just most of the time it's better to use attack so it doesn't really matter too much if your monsters don't have a triangle um, there's only one exception in the game where um, I think a monster can only reach its maximum efficiency if it if it has a triangle gem, and that's the that's the Dark Wild Fang. Um, dark Wild Fang is a very unique monster that has really really high crit rate and, a, and also being dark, um, you can gem at triple attack or double attack crit damage and still reach 100% crit if you have like good enough substats. So that like that's like the only exception in the game I think um, where having a triangle will you know. Be, you'll, you'll be able to get like highest efficiency um, on that monster if you have like a triangle slot but most of the time like 99.9% .9 of the time it, you don't need triangle on any of your monsters and in in my opinion I think triangles are arguably the least desired slot on your monsters and I'll talk a little bit about that later now this is the diamond slot. Um, the diamond slot is the only slot that can have resist as a main stat. Now I don't have any gems that have resist because I sell them all. I don't really keep any of them. 
Um, they're kind of usable early on. Actually, I don't even recommend them. I don't recommend them at all, like, ever. Um, <laughs> resist is not... Resist is a, is a stat that is very, very important in Monster Super League. However, the reason why you don't want to use a main stat resist gem is because um, it actually gives too much resist that your resist caps out, making any bonus resist that you get on any of your other gems completely useless. So, um, and also resist usually... Um, has a higher number per roll so what I'm uh, what what this means is like I think the highest roll for a resist is like 9% and then like crit crit is like 7.5 I think like HP is like 6% or something I can't remember exactly or is it like 7% um, HP is like slightly lower than crit I think maybe I'm not I'm not too sure um, but it's easier to like basically if you um, add up your stats overall like if if you want to make a monster that has like max resist with um, high hp and high defense it's more effective for you to use um, hp and defense main stat gems and then booster resist up from substats and also there's monsters that have like resist leaders and if you already have max resist it basically completely wastes the resist leader because resist caps out at 85 it it really can't go any higher um so so yeah, there, there's there's that. Um, diamond slots are, I guess, the second most desired slot. There's only three, like so it's like also the second least desired slot. Um, moving on, this this is the square slot. Now this is probably the most the, the topic of the video. Um, the square slot is the only slot that has crit rate. Now, crit rate is pretty important. Um, I would say crit is extremely important in half of the monsters in the game because first of all like a lot of the strong monsters are dark uh, and then there's also monsters that have skills that only activate when when they crit so i'll give a few examples this is the light spark it his shock skill only activates on critical hits it says over here critical hits blah 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 um, anything anytime you see see something like this or the light medusa you see critical hits critical hits um uh, there's also like water sura fire spark it um, water spark it you know critical hits um i think there's a lot of monsters there's also um or this is like the the first uh, situation where you really really want to square slot on these monsters because their skills their passive skills are completely useless like it's as if this skill is non-existent if it doesn't crit so what you want to do on these monsters ideally is have at least one square slot and with one square slot you will be able to push that monster's crit to 100% or near 100%. Um, the second type of monsters that really really need the crit, crit gem um, are monsters that have hunter skills. So monsters that have like skills that increase damage on crit. Uh, so like monsters like, like, like the uh, wood anu or... Mm, or light jack and light jack is is both because it has hunter and it also has a skill that only activates on critical hits so this is like crit is extremely important on this monster um it's really important to have a square slot on your on your light jack um yeah i think i think that's that's type two and type three are dark monsters now dark monsters it doesn't matter what monsters they are they have a base of 100 percent crit damage so what this means is, you, in order for you to take advantage of the bonus crit damage, you ideally want to have 100% crit on these monsters. You want them to always be critting. This way you take advantage of their um, you know, innate natural abilities. So it's quite important, I think, um, for dark monsters, but not all the time. Depends on how you're gemming that monster and depends on um, you know, the, the way you want to use that monster if, if you really, really need a square slot. It's not true for all dark monsters. Um, basically, all dark monsters have this 100% crit. Um, the only exception are healers. Dark healers do not have them. Dark healers have 30% resist instead. So I guess this is still pretty good. Yeah, like the the, the light dark healer base resist is like super OP. Um, but yeah, you you ideally want to have crit rate or or crit one crit gem on some of the most of these dark monsters or monsters that ha have a skill that activates only on crit um or monsters that have the hunter skill because they're basically like you know if a monster has a hunter skill they're kind of like dark monsters you do want them to crit to take advantage of their passive skill if they don't crit then their um, passive is basically non-existent 
Now, mm, a lot of people ask me if, like, I get a lot of questions sometimes of people asking me, you know, hey Fanta, I have this so and so dark monster, um, but it doesn't have a square slot. Should I should I still continue using it or should I still continue building it? My answer to that is it it really depends. Um, most of the time, I would say I can't say a hundred percent, but I can say maybe eighty percent of the time, um, a monster, a dark monster, will not reach its its maximum potential without the square slot. Um, so, you know, a lot of people were really salty before when the Dark Sarah event came out, and you can only make one of these, and it's either like you you get a square slot or you don't. So it's pretty, it it, it was pretty intense. Um, a lot of people were were trying to trying to make the Dark Sarah, and um, a lot of people were extremely pissed when it came without a square slot. Fortunately for me, I did at least get one square, so which means I can push her crit rate relatively high. Now, monsters like these um, that that are just dark attackers that have that have um, skills that aren't reliant on crit, it is still more it is still ideal. Like you you still will be able to make her much much better if you have the square slot, but it's she's still usable without. And if you compare her to um, other monsters that don't have square slots, it depends on what you're using her for and what you're um, you know, yeah, it actually just depends on what you're using her for. Uh, there's a lot of examples where, for dark attackers, I really, really do want the 100% crit, and that's mostly for PvP offense. Um, in PvP offense, you want to make sure there are, th you want to reduce the amount of variables in PvP offense. You want to usually win consistently. Uh, the way you climb in PvP offense is if you can win every single, if you can win like 90% of the fights, then your rank will just keep going up. Um, but however, in like PvP defense or sometimes in farming, um, depends on what you're farming, it might not, you might not really need the 100% the crit, especially on harder stages where you're, you're sure you're not able to completely one-shot the wave. You just want like a higher chance for you to one-shot the wave. This way it gets you like faster farm times. Um, or if you're using a monster on defense, um, RNG is actually pretty good then because you can't you can't consistently win on defense unless you well actually you, actually no 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 there's there's no way you can consistently like even if you had to have a team like this you still cannot like absolutely consistently win in defense uh, there are still ways that people can beat you and most of the time they 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 are still like most people are still able to beat you. Um, even if you have like a you know top 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 tier defense, um, it's just the way that the, the game works. It's kind of rigged towards the offense. The offense get gets to go first, and you know just taking advantage of that. And plus how dumb the AI is um, on defense, you can usually win like ninety percent of the time, even against like top top tier teams. If you have like a good enough offense, that is, if you have a stable enough offense. And going back to the point of PvP offense, the, the reason why I want to reduce the amount of variables is because I want to know exactly what I can do before I enter the fight. So I'll take this for example, say for example I'm fighting this team. Um, I can pretty much before I even enter the fight, I know how the fight is going to go down. And I know like the, the various ways that the fight can go down, depending on who the, the enemy AI attacks. Um, I can know like what will happen, how much damage my units will do. I know exactly how much damage my units will do um, against their units because I kind of predict how how their units are gemmed. So for example, this team I would predict like that this Light Odin's probably gemmed like triple HP, same as the Shiva, um, you know, same as the well actually the Miho's probably like crit rate double double HP, and then like the Arthur is like probably. Um, you know, since he has like some other high threat units, he might have he might have sn sneakily stuck s snuck an attack gem on this guy, but it's 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 just me guessing. Um, and you know, if I go in with a team like hmm, my lips are like cracking up. If I go in with a team of like dark attackers, say for example, I'll, I'll use my like more most stable team. Um, which is like, which is like my, uh, my Cupid, my, where is it? God damn it. 
Like, I, I go in with, like, Cupid, um, Kira, you know, and my two Dark Atitos. Now, my two Dark Atitos, this one has 100% crit. This one has 99% crit, which usually shouldn't fuck me over. Um, but it, 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 it might. But if it does actually fuck me over, it's, it's whatever. Like, I just... It fucks me over once out of 100 attack so it's 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 it's, it's okay it, it doesn't matter that much um now if i go in with a team like this i know exactly how much damage my two gatitos will do every single turn so if they if i have a hundred percent crit on both gatitos i go in and i know like i can calculate how much damage they would do like so i know like if if i want wanted to kill like a, a light nike um that is like usually nike light nikes are like triple defense and they have an HP lead, then I would know that I would need to send all four of my units, like through experience, I know that I would need to send all four of my units on that Light Nike in order to one-shot her on the first turn. Um, and then I can kind of use that knowledge to know how the fight is going to go. And then like, you know, I have my bar full on first turn because I have like morale boost and stuff like that. And then, you know, depending on the RNG, sometimes I can, I can get my attack bar full on one of my gatitos one shot one of their other high threat units and basically win the fight after that so and then i know that like i will be able to one shot 100 percent because they have 100 percent crit so it basically eliminates the amount of variables that i have if i have if my dark attackers that i'm using for pvp offense have 100 percent crit um, which is why i'm a i'm a big big fan of having 100 percent crit um, now the other reason Another scenario where you want high reliability or high crit is on your Siphon Farmers. Um, for your Siphon Farmers, say for example, I'll, I'll use my um, Fire Gen for example. I'll go in and do, do like a run. Now, my Fire Gen has, I think, 80% crit without the with his gems, like 85% crit. Now, he has a crit leader, which boosts his crit rate to 100%, meaning that he will always crit. And... Because I know that he will always crit, I know that he does enough damage on this level, depending, doesn't matter which unit he hits, because of his crit and his siphon gems and his siphon first skill, I know exactly how much damage he would do. Like he would always do that amount of consistent damage, meaning that he will always get his bar full on second turn, which means that if I do this and um, I know that because of his second skill, like because of how much damage he does, because of the crit, because he's going to be critting on both of these units, the siphon gem will be able to um, siphon enough enough um, SP for me to get a bar full on second turn. So I'll, I'll show you this. Meaning that no matter what, uh, my gen's bar attack bar will be full every single turn. So. I can reduce my farming time down to 36 seconds basically, that's that's the fastest. Like reliably 36 seconds every single run. Like there will not be a run where my attack bar um, is not full or anything like that. She, like his, his bar will, will be full 100% of the time. So I, I don't have to rely on RNG that way. And that's one of the other reasons why having 100% crit on some units is, is uh, like your farming units is, is pretty important as well. Um, but yeah, this is this is still somewhat situational. So um, going back to going back to the monster box, going back to talking about square slots. Um, that being said, for certain dark attackers, especially monsters that you're planning to use on PvP offense, if they don't have the square slot, um, I would say they're not viable for like the top top tier of play. And also for like you know farmers like Fire Jin, um, Fire Siegfried, if they don't have score slots, then um, well actually Fire Siegfried you can probably use triple attack because he has high enough attack. So like even if he doesn't crit, but then if you're farming harder content where you want to make sure his bar is always full, then I might switch him to over to a siphon set where he has 100% crit, and then I can rely on the crit to get his attack bar full every single turn that way. Um, so. It's, it's more about consistency, like in, in situations where you have to absolutely have, like be consistent and eliminate as many variables as possible, which um, is the case for PvP offense and farming, then you want to have the, the score slot on, on these monsters, this way they can always crit, always do the exact same amount of damage, um, you don't have to rely on RNG for any of that. So that's, 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 that's the first thing about square slots. That's the, that's the first advantage of having a square slot. Um, and monsters without square slots, they're still usable, but they're 
like at the highest tier, they're not um, they're not viable. Um, now the second thing is I actually get some questions about monsters like the Dark Birdie. Um, I actually don't have a Dark Birdie because I, I for some weird reason I cannot summon Dark Birdie. I, like I've summoned like a shit ton of Light Mihos, but like no Dark Birdie. Um, all right, let me see. Okay, so a monster like this is um, a little bit of a unique case. Now, monsters like Dark Birdie and Dark Miho, it's possible for them to still be like used in the highest tier without a score slot. And the reason for that is because they their skills and their uses um, are usually in places where RNG is not that big of a factor. And also RNG can work in your favor. Now. When I talk about PvP offense, I want to eliminate as many variables as possible. But in PvP defense, um, you want to create as many variables for the opponent as possible. So, in this case, I want my dark attackers to, you know, maybe sometimes crit, so they can't predict how much damage they would do. And then if they do crit, they would do like a, a more damage. Um, <laughs> this way, I can. I can, you know, kind of cheese the opponent and then, like, through bad RNG sometimes win the fight. Um, and then this is also why, like, gems like Pugilist, which gives, like, a 20%. Like, 20% isn't too high. You can't effectively stun people with that. But if it does actually proc um, and you get lucky, then it can ruin the, you know, the ruin the opponent's chance of, of winning the fight sometimes. So, um, in PvP defense, monsters that you're mostly using for, like, PvP defense... I don't think it's it's that important for for you to have that consistency. So it's perfectly um, it's perfectly fine for monsters like Dark Birdie and Dark Mihos to to be used without square slots because you can still gem them like triple HP and you put them on defense and they're still like extremely tanky um, through the HP aggression. They'll still do a lot of damage and if they do actually crit, they will do more damage than a monster that is gemmed with crit rate double HP. You know, so that's. You know, there, there's 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 ups and downs to that as well. Um, so I think monsters like these, you don't really need to have a square slot. It's not it's not that important. Um, but yeah, that's that's for monsters like these. And then there's also like dark utility monsters that don't necessarily need a square slot. So. Um, like something like this. Like it doesn't, he, you know, he mostly, you're probably still gemming him like mostly tanky anyways, and he's like mostly for titans. Um, you don't really need a square slot, you know, monsters like, like Dark Yaksha, who I mostly use her like full tanky. Uh, but you can also use her as an attacker because, because she's balanced. But if you're like trying to go for the tank build, then, um, you know, you don't need the square slot. If you wanted the attack build, then the square slot is definitely better to, to take advantage of her crit damage. Um... But yeah, it, it depends on what you're using the monster for, if you if you really, really need the square slot. Um, now, the other advantage to having a square slot for monsters is square slots are easier to farm. Now, if you look at my gem count, like just look at this, I have 32, 36 triangles, 104 squares, and 47 diamonds. And the reason for that, for this extreme disparity is because... Um, Golem's B8 is much, much easier to farm than B7 and B9. Now, I think my B9 team might even be slower than my B10 runs. But I basically, I only farm B8 or I only farm B10. Um, I usually go into B8 when I'm trying to farm gold. Now, you can have like the fastest B10 team, and I think um, you'll still have higher gold efficiency if you're farming B8. It's just because B8 is much, much faster. But the problem with only farming B8 is you'll only have score slots. Uh, which actually goes into, which actually could be beneficial if your monsters mostly have squares. So when I'm whenever I'm trying to build a monster, I usually try to get a monster that has as many squares as possible. So you'll you'll see this in a lot of the monsters that I, I build. Um, they usually at least have one square. If if that's not possible, then I would or um, actually if that's not possible, I might not use that monster. Um, but any monsters that I build, I would prefer to have as many squares as possible. So stuff like this, uh, you know, I have two squares on this. Um, monsters where I have multiple of and I can choose which one to build. 
then I would I would try to get as many squares as I can. Um, same thing about like the gins. I still can't can't find a triple square fire gin, but I you know this one has two, so it's good enough. Same with the Siegfried. It has two squares. Well, actually, it's the only Siegfried. I, I was just lucky with this. Um, this one, this light spark kit. I think I had a few light sparks. This one was was one with two squares, so I decided to build this one. Um, this light radis also has two squares, so I, I decided to build him. And um, you know the Gatito event. They actually gave us a a slot reroll. I spent I think three or four or five million. I can't remember how much money I spent, but it cost a lot to reroll these monsters. And I, I spent like th three to five million gold rerolling the slots on my Gatito until it gave me triple square, um, which is why I'm able to do this now and have like a ruin set with 100% crit because of the triple square. Um, so, you know, ideally any monster that I build, any monster that I use, I would try to get as many square slots as possible because it's much, much easier for you to farm square slots in Golden's B8 versus um, B7 and B9 or even B10. I still can't find a triple square light jack. The closest I got is this one. Um, it's got two square, one diamond. B7 is slightly easier to farm than B9, so like, you know, the diamond is actually a little bit more preferred. Um, I think I was lucky. The Stark Verde, if I ever build in the future, it also has triple square. Um, can't can't find a triple square light jack. Closest I got is like two squares. I, I can't find one with triple square. I, I've been trying to, I've been hunting since day one for a triple square light jack. I think I built a second water anu as well. And that one also has like triple square. Um, yes, this, the, the, the triple square. Uh, so like prefer, preferably I would always have my monsters with as many square slots as possible because of how much easier it is to farm B8. Um, that That is one of the, like that, B8 is one of the easiest places to farm. If you compare B7 to B10, this this stage is much, much e easier than the other stages. Now, this is also true for dragons. For some weird reason, like, this game is biased towards squares. Towards squares. Uh, if you if you compare B1 to B3, which is, like, the same tier, it's, like, 4-star to 5-star gems, B1 is the easiest to farm in dragons, and this one only drops square. The same thing can be said for B4 as well. Um, B4 to B6, B4 is the easiest to farm. Plus, it's also fire. So if you have like a B8 team, you can actually throw it into Dragon's B4, and you can farm this stage relatively easily. Um, so it's ideal for you to have like some units with a lot of squares. Um, and also B7 to B10. B7 has the is the easiest to farm out of the, the three stages. Plus, the Dragon is also an attacker in the stage, so he's much much easier to kill, which makes your farming time even faster. Um, it's it's easier to farm and it's also faster to farm. So having more square on your monsters is is usually ideal. Sometimes I go down to B7 and farm it um, when I don't have time to to auto B10. I just click you know and then have my units do a run and then I click again and they just they just do 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 another run. But if I do golden or if I do dragon B10, I have to manual the whole entire fight, which um, sometimes I don't have the time to do so. And I don't even have a team that can auto B, B8 or B9. Um, I didn't build one, but I think it's definitely possible. You can definitely build a team that can auto B8 and B9. Um, but it's also going to be much, much... It's it's going to be much harder to farm these two stages versus B, B7. So... Just having square slots on your monsters has, has a lot of advantages. Um, so usually it's like square is the best, and then like the second is like diamond, and then the triangle is like the least preferred because triangle usually is is harder to farm. Um, but yeah, that that's that's I think that's pretty much it. Like I just you know, if you if you ever want to build a monster and you have like multiples of and you don't know which one you want to build, just go and look at look at their slots. You want to pick out the one with triple square cuz triple square master race, all right? That's what they're called. The ones that are born into this world with three squares are the true master race. All right, they are the master race of Monster Super League. Triple square master race, baby. But yeah, I hope that clears up all your questions about about square slots. Um, you know, when you get to like when you get to like the very end game. It's usually preferred that to have like it's it's 
usually better for your monsters to have as many squares as possible. This way it's easier to build them. And you know like, you know when I was building, when I got my Chloe and the Odin, they, they, they came in with, with slots like this. Um, I didn't even have the gems to, to build them because I have like, like I have no, no HP. Um, you know, diamond or triangle gems. Like I only have like 36 triangles and I have like 130 um, square slots. And like most of those square slot gems are actually better. Like they're higher grade, higher quality, higher tier than um, these triangle gems. But, you know, maybe, maybe I'll build like a Dragon's B, BA team and just farm Dragon's BA for like three months only like only farming dragons ba and maybe i'll have some triangle gems um <laughs> but yeah i i don't know I, I i mean it's it it makes things a little bit more exciting like there's another rng factor when you're, whenever you're summoning a monster um but sometimes it, it really does piss people off like if you if, if you have a monster that, that you can only get one of and it came without a square and you have like no other chance to get that monster then you know obviously a lot of people are, are really really salty um but at the same time a lot of monsters are still usable if even if they don't have square you can still like if you have very good intuition gems you can try to build like a triple attack you know 100 percent crit intuition it might just work but anyways, that's that's pretty much it. I hope I hope that clears up any questions you have. If you have any more questions, you can definitely ask me, and I'll um, I'll try in the future to you know make a video answering those questions. Well, I can actually answer your questions in the in the comments. But if it's like a really really common question, I I think making a video like this will definitely be helpful. But anyways, I hope um, you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.